there's a certain type of buck rub that a lot of people look over and they don't realize the significance of it. These kinds of rubs right like this. See how that's just like sheared off? All three of these snapped right off. That's a big buck. Only a big buck has the neck strength to wrap their antlers around a tree that size and rip it in half. I don't know if you guys have ever tried to do that yourself. Doesn't happen. You don't got the strength to do that. So when you see a rub like that, you know that's a tank of a deer that's got some strong neck muscles and he's putting his full force into just shredding that tree up. So I got another tip for you guys here. You can kind of tell a little bit of the time of year that these rubs were made, specifically mostly with aspen. The healing process begins a little bit quicker on these trees. So you can kind of see here, see the splotches that are starting to form on this thing? That means the tree was starting the healing process, but yet it's still pretty fresh. It's definitely from this last year, um, but I would say that that's probably a rub that was made probably early September to mid-September time frame. So this rub here that I'm about to show you, this is one that was probably made from a season ago. This is on Aspen, okay, so just for reference. That is, a, is a, an older looking rub, okay? But now compare that to this rub over here. You see that there's no splotching, no discoloration. That was probably a rub that I would estimate was made during the season, probably sometime in or around the rut. On my third tip here for you guys, the height of the rub says more about the deer than the size of the tree. Let me give you an example here. This rub, nothing too fancy for the rub, doesn't look like anything too special, but the top of that rub is up over waist height and I'm standing on six inches of snow right now. I'll give you guys another example here. This is another nice big rub just a few feet away. And I got tine marks poked up to there. That's the middle of my waist. When you start getting rubs that are over waist height, you know that you have a very solid deer that is in this spot. My fourth tip for you guys. When you're going to look for a buck bedroom, rubs can actually tell you a lot about where a buck is bedding. And this is a lot easier to figure out in a, in a big wood setting. But oftentimes for me, when I find a buck bedroom, I look for a spot where all of a sudden I'm noticing rubs going in every single different direction. Like it's almost like the center hub on the spokes of a wheel. And all of a sudden you've got rubs heading, pointing in one direction, then you've got rubs pointing in this direction, then you've got rubs pointing in this direction, then you've got rubs pointing in this direction. When you find that, generally that is a sign that this is a place that bucks are spending more of their time in and they're not just cruising through that area. My fifth tip is if you look above the main portion of the rub on the tree, and if you can see tine marks poked on the tree above that, that means you've got some tine length on this animal. So let's take a look at this one here. You've got the main portion of the rub there, but then all of a sudden you've got these scrapes and tine marks poking way up even into here. So the main body of this thing is down here, and we're talking that is a solid 12 inches, a foot higher, if not more, than the top of this main portion of the rub. My sixth tip for you guys. If you find a rub that has a little bit of green on the edges, that is a fresh, fresh, fresh rub that was made within days. Now when these rubs are immediately made, they'll actually have like a greenish tint to them. But once it gets rubbed after a while, that'll kind of change color. So as you can see, this is kind of a goldenish, yellowish kind of color. That can be really helpful when you're in season. If you're trying to find hot sign and all of a sudden you look and you see this green, fresh, almost wet looking rub, boom, you are in the money. My seventh tip for you guys is to try to find um, areas where there are old rubs and where there are new rubs. So for instance, where I'm standing right now in this bedroom, 
I can see at least 12 different rubs. Some of them are like fresh, like I just showed you before, and some of them are old. Take a look at this one here. That's an old rub, okay? Take a look at that one. That's an old rub. But then I've got right behind me, I've got fresh ones, okay? So when you find an area that has old and fresh sign all in there, that means that this is an area that deer are using consistently year in and year out. Another tip for you guys with rubs is that rubs can also give you a direction that the deer is going in. So for instance, I've got this rub right here facing a east slash northeast direction, which is going this way. And then I go just a few feet further right over on that tree over there facing the exact same direction. And then I go up on that ridge and it's facing, that maple up there is facing the same direction. You've got three lines of rubs all heading in this direction, which is an east-northeast direction. So where this can be helpful for you is that if you're finding rubs and they're going in a certain direction, follow them. See where it takes you. Maybe it'll take you right to that buck's bedroom. Another tip for you guys, usually I don't find buck bedding areas without a lot of rubs. At least not ones that they're using very much. So for example here, I know that this is a bedding area and it confirms to me that it's a bedding area because I'm finding so many rubs. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I've got probably 20 rubs just in this little swath, not including the old rubs that are up there. So uh, that tells me, dude, something's spending a lot of time here. Generally when deer spend a lot of time in an area, they do the activity that deer usually do. And for a buck, that is to rub his antlers on trees, okay? So if a deer is, if you're, if you're finding, especially in the big woods, if you're finding areas that are just loaded with sign, with rubs all over the place, Maybe start thinking about, is this actually a buck bedding area, okay? And yes, in the big woods, bucks do have bedrooms, okay? I know a lot of people think, oh, they're just so nomadic. They never this, they never that. They have their preferred places. Not all of them, but a lot of them do, at least here in northern Wisconsin where I'm at. I've got another little tip for you guys here. Say you find multiple areas that a buck is bedding at but you're unsure which one you should hunt or which one is this deer going to be in now obviously you can't know that always for certain um, but one thing that i am of the persuasion with is that the more sign equals more time so if a deer is leaving more sign in one bedroom versus the other that can be a, you know, a giveaway that maybe he's going to be spending more of his time in a certain bedding area. So for example, back over on that ridge way over there, that's where I was finding all of that heavy, heavy, heavy sign. Probably 30 rubs found over there. But I know that this point that I'm standing on right now is a place that this buck does bed from time to time because I found his sign here from previous years and there's a couple rubs here leading right out to this point but there's not nearly the amount of sign here so I probably wouldn't spend as much time hunting this spot just because I don't think he's spending quite as much time here if he was spending as much time as he was over there he'd probably be laying down more sign here if he's only here once a month he's probably only gonna lay down a couple rubs or maybe since the other buck that's with him is more mature, he's gonna kick him out of that bedding area and it's not gonna happen until the rut happens. So he's only gonna be here for a little short window of time and then he's gonna be off chasing does. So <clears throat> that's one tip that you can have is at least for me, I'm, I, I believe that if you find more sign, that means that a buck is spending more time there because it takes time for a deer to, to lay down sign. You know, they don't just pop in for two minutes, lay down a ton of rubs, you know, 10, 15, you know, that, that bedroom over there, that was not made overnight. That sign was not laid overnight. That took like 
a long time. I was getting summer pictures of these bucks coming from this area over there. Uh, I had pictures of them all throughout the early season, laying down rubs, sign. This was months of time. I found them leaving scrapes in August, right across the road over there. So, I mean, like, it takes time for this sign to just pop up and happen. It's not like it just happens overnight. So, if you're finding a bedding area and you're, you're unsure of it, look at how much quantity of sign there is and that could tell you or cue you in to whether or not this is a spot that's worth really investing a lot of time in or if it's only like a once a month bed like this spot i'm probably not going to worry about it too much because you got to get so stinking lucky that you're there at the right place right time so i'm going to put my bets on a bedding area like that where i'm finding a lot of rubs a lot of sign my next tip for you guys is that oftentimes, like if I find an area too that also has a lot of rubs, not only can that be a bedding area, but that can also be a sign of a lot of competitive uh, things going on in the deer herd. So for instance, in this spot, I've got two deer that are pretty mature that are in this area. So there's a lot more competition. So they're probably gonna be laying down a lot more sign in this area. So like for instance, where I'm standing, I've probably got 10 or 12 rubs within 20 yards of me here right now. Okay, so I don't necessarily think the deer is bedding right in this spot. I think that this is the spot where these bucks are coming from the bedding back up there. And this is like all of a sudden they get to a lot of the, the good food right here. And they, they, they hunker down and get a snack or two. And I'm finding a bunch of poop all over in here. So they're, they're getting the bowels moving or eating a little bit of food. And, uh, and, and they're laying down a bunch of sign right here, right on this edge. So I definitely think that, you know, when you find a lot of rubs, if you put a trail camera out, it might show that there is some competition in the area. Another tip for you guys is that rubs can tell you what direction a buck is going in and out of their bedding areas. Generally, when a buck approaches a tree, He's going to rub on the side of the tree that he's facing, generally. That's usually what it's going to be. So, for instance, in this one, it's facing a southern direction. But his bedroom is behind me up to the north. So this is an area that the buck is exiting his bed. He's coming here. He's nibbling on some of the stuff that we've got all around here. A lot of good browse and he's rubbing his antlers on trees, headed in a southerly direction here. So, pay attention to those kinds of things because that also can clue you in on ways to be able to hunt a deer uh, based on if you find a bedroom or not. You can sneak in close and realize, okay, his rubs are coming out from the south, so I need to go in when there's an off wind. Oh, key in on those kinds of things. When you find a bedding area, find out where are the rubs going in and out of that bedding area. And I've got another tip for you guys. Sometimes there's certain little characteristic traits that you'll find in a rub that you don't usually find in maybe other rubs. Uh, I don't necessarily have a situation that I can show you right now um, other than just like a, a slight maybe example is maybe you find that there's a buck that when he rubs trees there, there usually just seems to be tine marks or, or scrape marks like this that go up the tree and, and it seems like he does that often. That can be the case of maybe where a deer has some unique characteristics around their, their bases. There's some burrs, some, some things that are really jagged and, and daggers sticking off of his antlers. So you could find like little, little like nick marks or, or poke marks that just slice up the tree. And my final tip, this is a big one. If you take a look at this rub, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice. Nothing too crazy. Tine marks poking up over here, no big deal. But, take a look at this. You have marks on this tree, on the back side of it, over here. And this rub is over here. So let's do a little mathematics here, just so you can see. My hand is nine inches, okay, from there, and and some of this is up under here. So you're talking that is almost a foot of separation 
where he is rubbing on this here, but his beams and his tines are reaching and wrapping all the way, actually even up into here. All the way up to there, he's scraping up on that tree, poking. That, my friends, is what happens when you have a deer that has a nice spread on it. All right, so just to explain this a little bit further, when a buck approaches a tree, he's got his brow tines, and he's gonna hook them right like this, and he's gonna be pulling them, and he's gonna go to this side of his brow, and he's gonna go to the insides of his brow. Uh, whatever angle he comes at it, he'll, he'll approach and scrape it. I'm assuming that he did it like this. Um, probably not like this. Probably, probably stuck his inside of his brow tine on this side. And then what that means is then his antler is wrapping around, his main beam is wrapping around and it's hooking on this tree and it's sliding up and down and he's breaking off branches from the inside of his far brow to the outside or to the inside of his left beam. That's 12 inches. Okay. So we're talking that might mean that this deer would have a 17 inch spread or 18 inch spread, which is about what I think that he has based off of my trail camera pictures. So you can learn a lot about the spread of a deer even by something like this. You know, if, you, if, if the angle of the rub was more on this side, then that would make me think that he would have approached it with his brow on this side and was scraping it like this, or that he was on the back side of his other brow and was scraping like this. But since he's scraping more to this side of the tree, he's probably using this side of his brow or he's using this side of his, uh, his other, of his left brow. So um, if he's using this side, then that would mean that his spread would really be wrapped around. There you have it, guys. Please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks, guys.